we'll go do a quick run through on how to work with Vortex and I'm going to be using Skyrim Special Edition as an example on how to mod with Vortex. I've covered Fallout 4 using my Nexus Mod Bandage tutorial and it's done really well so thanks for that guys but we're going to be covering Skyrim using Vortex this time. Now this is good for a few reasons. One, I hate Vortex so it's good that we're running through it and two, uh, I don't mod Skyrim so it's a little bit, little bit new to me. That being said, I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to the mods. And so yeah, we sh I should have you covered. So first and foremost, we're going to go down to games in Vortex. Don't be scared if the Vortex UI looks alien as shit. I'm fucking right there with you. Don't worry. But first and foremost, we're going to go down to games from the dashboard. We're going to go up here to scan, and you're going to click whichever is appropriate to you. This is purely just scanning your hard drives to see where your Skyrim or your Fallout or whatever games they are. You know, where they are. So here you'll see, you'll probably see your Skyrim shop here as well. So you'll see Discovered Games, you're going to go over here, hit the little tick, and then it'll show up in your Manage tab. If you get little errors, for now, we're going to ignore them. Uh, if you do need further help sort of solving those issues, please comment below. Let me know what the little error is saying, if it's genuinely stopping you running the game. Um, don't worry, if it doesn't affect the game, just ignore the errors. Seriously, you get away with it so many times. Uh, but if you do get stuff let me know what the error is in the comments and I'll do my best to help you. But for now, Skyrim Special Edition. You're going to hit a little tick, it'll be like that, but I've already done it. Um, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Now, we're going to go to the mods. Don't have any mods. Well, that's not good. We're going to click this Don't Worry I Know A Place. It's going to take us straight to the Skyrim Modding Nexus place, which is just Nexus Mods. Surprise, surprise. And we're just going to download... Oh, okay. Sexy anime waifu 3000. Yep, that's what we need. Fucking Jesus Christ. We're going to go the most endorsed of all time. Because... Why not? Uh, we're going to go with this. You can see I've downloaded it because this is take like 100 of this whole tutorial. Haha, <laughs> I want to die. Okay. Unofficial Skyrim patch. When you're here... Don't worry about all the details. Uh, you can read through this stuff if you're not confident or if you get stuck on something kind of basic. Just read the description. It's There's the install stuff. Don't sweat it. Uh, <laughs> I've covered loot in a separate video. Uh, I will link it in the... God, I hope I'm pointing top right. The top right corner, there'll be a little eye pop up. Click that and it'll take you to the how to use loot guide. Uh, I will also briefly cover it in this video just in case you couldn't be fucked going there. That's fine. I don't mind. Anyway. You're going to go up to the top here, scroll down a little bit, it'll say description, files, images, blah blah blah. You're going to click files, I'm just going to wait a second, you're going to click mod manager download. As this is a Vortex tutorial, it will not be going to Nexus mod manager anymore. There's the pop-up, it'll go to Vortex automatically. We'll click the pop-up, that did absolutely nothing because Windows 10. We'll open up Vortex from the bottom, up the top in downloads. Ugh. I now have hiccups, my god. Attempt 500, and I've got hiccups now. Fucking awesome. <laughs> Up in downloads. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> in downloads, you'll see uh, here uh, that your mod has started to download. We're just going to let, uh, let it do its thing. Fuck. <laughs> and I'll be with you when it's finished. <laughs> Alright, cool. Download finished, you get this satisfying little green tick box. Great! Uh, there are three ways you can install this. Three. I can count. Um, you can click install in the little green box. You can click install in the little orange box. Or, which this is the method we're going to be doing, you can simply navigate back down to mods. This is where I'll be showing you. We're going to dismiss this. Just here is uh, where you'll basically manage all of your mods. This is going to be your best friend. Um, this one window is essentially the entirety of Nexus Mod Manager, just with a way less user-friendly UI. Yay! Um, <laughs> so to install it, over here, little orange button, click install. It's going to extract it. It's going to install it. It's done! Cool! Now, in enabling, um, not in the sense of, like, agreeing with someone, even though you don't really, um... You can either click Enable at the top here, in this little window, which we are not going to do, we're just going to dismiss it. Uh, or, now, you would be looking in Nexus Mod Manager, you'd look for a big green tick, because that makes sense. But in this, you're going to look around here, and you're going to be like, oh, I don't know, 
and that would be fair because this is rubbish. You're going to use this drop down menu or just click that maybe, does that even work? Oh, you can click that, great, you can click the disable button to enable it because anyone would think of that. But yeah, basically you can just go to the drop down menu, click enabled. So uh, that's done, that is installed. Bada bing bada boom, that is legit finished, finito. Now there are a few things that could have happened just then for you if you were following along at home. Uh, the first one would be you've just randomly gotten a fucking spam of little errors saying something along the lines of um, deployment failed or uh, I'm not really sure. Just It was just getting angry at you about deployment or saying some files are missing, blah blah blah. Uh, that's bad, <laughs> but it's okay. I'll run you through how to fix it. So, first and foremost, the deployment one, I'll give you a quick rundown on what that is. Uh, the deployment bug, or error message, is essentially, the way it deploys your mods, it wants, or it prefers, this is Vortex, it prefers you to have Vortex, your, your game you're modding, like Skyrim in this case, and all of your Skyrim mods, or whatever game you're modding mods, all on the one drive. Okay, it doesn't matter where they are on the drive per se, but just on the one drive. Uh, now, if you have them split up, that's when it gets a bit upset with you in regards to deployment. Uh, this is pretty easy to fix, and the error message itself regarding deployment will actually run you through how to do it. In the event that it doesn't, for reasons unknown to me, I'm going to quickly try to spitball it. Uh, sure enough, that was easy. All you have to do is click settings, go to mods, it already took me here, and you're going to want to change this and make sure that the staging folder for your mods is in the same place as Vortex. So if you've got Vortex installed on, say, iDrive, make sure that, you know, that's where it's supposed to be. Try to keep everything in the same drive. In the event that you cannot, you can use this move deployment. So what that does is it deploys it from different hard drives. As it says it's experimental, I wouldn't recommend it. If you do choose to go that route, I cannot provide support. I mean, I can. I just don't want to because it's experimental and fuck that. Uh, but if you are using the hard link deployment, I'll be quite happy to help you. So that's all you have to do is just make sure that the drive, you've just got, just keep all your shit together. Just take all your shit, put it in a, put it in a backpack, go take it to a shit museum, you're done. Um, that's that. Great, this is a good tutorial. Yeah. And, um, cool. We're not going to worry about any of this other nonsense. That's all you have to do to fix that deployment issue. If you have other errors that aren't related to the deployment, maybe it's telling you that you're missing master files. Um, that one is probably because you might have old mods installed, uh, something like that. All you have to do for that one is actually go into Skyrim, launch it up, load into a game. That is will generate all of the user files and stuff, kind of like Fallout. You know, you want you want to at least run your game once before you start modding it. Uh, just like load into a new game and run around for two minutes or something. You don't have to do much. And uh, that's that done. Oh, hello me. How are you? Um, in the event that that doesn't do it for you and you're still getting like missing masters errors, in your Skyrim, which we will actually open now, but first I'm going to show you a quick shortcut. So, oh no, we didn't do script extension, did we? Okay, script extension. Let's cover that really quick. Let's cover that incredibly quickly. So there's no particular order for these. You can do the modding first. You can still follow this tutorial at home and it's completely accurate. But just for safety, just, just in case, we'll quickly install Skyrim Script Extender. So to install Skyrim Script Extender, you're gonna open your web browser, go to this URL. I will keep it in the description for you. You're gonna click down here at the current special edition build, click 7-zip archive, it'll ask you to save it. Then you're going to navigate to your downloads folder. You're going to grab this, right click, use a file extension extractor thingy, like 7-zip, WinZip, and I think Windows has a built-in one. Uh, you're just going to extract it to this location. Either of these two options will work with 7-zip. That'll give you this folder. You know, select all, right click, copy. I will do it now just so that you can follow along. I'm going to close that away. That doesn't matter anymore. We're going to open up Steam, go to Skyrim, right click on Skyrim, Properties, Local Files, Browse Local Files, and here we are inside your Skyrim directory. From here, right click and paste, that will paste in all these script extended required folders. There are 520 files in the same location. That's completely fine because I've already done this. So we're going to replace all of them. 
Done. Your Skyrim is now script extended. Easy peasy. Now, what I've also just taught you to do is update your script extender. In the event that your game, Sky so Skyrim, has an update, but every time you try to launch it, it uh, either crashes or gives you a bunch of warnings like, oh, script extender's not working or something. All you have to do is basically rinse and repeat the process I just showed you. Uh, go to the website, the skse.silverlock.org, um, and there'll be an updated version of SKSE for you there. And then you legit just do that whole process again, repaste it here, replace the files, and you're updated. Good job. Easy peasy. Okay, that bit's done. Uh, now the second part of this little bit is um, we're going to make a shortcut for the script extender. So the way we do that is down the bottom of your Steam, bottom left, add a game, add a non-Steam game, browse, navigate to your Skyrim directory, which for me is here, but I will show you the path. The drive letter may be different, but for the most part, that's your, that's your path. So uh, it'll usually be Steam library, like I'll even go back here. So. So Steam library, Steam apps, common, and then scroll down to S, and you'll get Skyrim Special Edition. Cool. Now, <clears throat> that dry spot's back. This is what we're after, the SKSE64 loader. Open that with Steam. It'll be ticked there. Add selected programs. Now we're going to type in SKSE, just to find where it went, in the event that you have, like, a bajillion Steam games. Uh, we're going to right-click on that, hit Properties. Pick the icon first, we're going to steal Skyrim's icon, it'll automatically take you here, because that's the file, last folder you were in, which is pretty handy. Uh, so we're going to do that first, we're going to rename this to Skyrim, SKSE, beautiful, and we're going to hit close. Beautiful, done. The reason we changed the icon first is because if you change the name, then change the icon, it resets the name for some stupid reason. Thanks Steam. Alright, cool. I'm just going to quickly set that category correctly to Bethesda. Beautiful. Now we're going to hit play. So what we've covered so far, we've script extended the game, and we've installed a mod. Singular mod. Very basic stuff. Uh, all that singular mod was was the unofficial patch. It just fixes a bunch of well-known bugs, and some not well-known. Now what we're going to do, main menu, everything should look pretty familiar. We're going to scroll down to mods. Not creation club, just mods. Now, the mods tab takes you to kind of Bethesda.net, but not really. Um, basically, a lot of Skyrim mods are now registered with Bethesda.net. Uh, we're going to ignore all of this shit, because I don't care about it. And we're going to hit T for load order. And this is where any mods you've just installed, for the most part, will show up just to confirm that they are installed. You can see here, unofficial Skyrim patch, it's installed. Cool, great, that's all we did. Go back. We know that's in there. Uh, what we don't know now is, is Skyrim Script Extender successfully installed? Well, good question. Let's figure it out. Hit the tilde key above the tab key on your keyboard, and we're going to type in SKSE, and hit enter. And if that doesn't show anything, like an unknown, unknown code or whatever, like if we type in butts, script command not found, that means it's not installed correctly. Go back, rewatch that part, just go through step by step, you'll get there. Uh, in the event that it does show up with the version number and everything, you're good to go, you're done. Don't work in. Alright. I'll just load into a game. Yeah, there's fucking Alduin looking all spiky and shit. So we'll quickly let this load. Uh, this is on a hard drive, not an SSD, so it does take a little while longer than I would like. All I'm doing here is just showing that you can load into your game, like, fully into the starting sequence without it crashing. That's all I have to do, because it'll show you that, you know, physics are working, the world's loaded, everything's good. Yeah, yeah, bugger off, Todd Howard. Just put me in the cart, dude. Let's go. Put me in the cart. I want to see that horse thief. Sick. Hey, buddy. Alright. And, as you can see, even though it's blurry as fuck, because apparently I'm a massive crack fiend, we're in Skyrim, we made it, cool. We did it. Alright, that's all I needed to show. Quit the game now. Get out of here, Quest Journal. Go back to the desktop. You did it! You've just installed your first mod. Now, you might want to move on, get some more, that sort of thing. You literally just rinse and repeat that first process I showed you to install the unofficial Skyrim patch. 
That's all you have to do. Now, say down the line you've got about 10 mods, and you're sitting there thinking, hmm, how do I know these are in the right order? What about dependencies? That kind of thing. For the most part, for the entry level user, you can get away with just using loot. You can just use loot and just kind of wing it, and you'll get by. Uh, I'm not going to cover using Vortex for dependencies per se. Uh, essentially, the way it works is. Um, We'll pretend I... Oh, fuck it. I may as well cover it really quickly. We'll cover it in the most basic form possible. Let's pretend we have two more mods here. One mod relies on the unofficial Skyrim patch. We'll call it unofficial Skyrim patch's baby. And, uh... We'll, un, Skyrim patch son. And then he's got Skyrim patch grandson, which relies on the son. You click your dependencies. And it'll give you the option to sort of link them. And you'll just link them upwards. So, in order. You can see it's like a family tree. So, the dad the son, the grandson. Those are your dependencies. If you think about it like that, you should be able to just common sense it, and you should get by. So that's that's something new, per se, from Nexus Mod Manager. In Nexus Mod Manager, you didn't really worry about that too much. Um, so we can just, yeah. But if you do need it, that's kind of how it works. But uh, in regards to loot, I have covered in a different video, which again, or I don't even know anymore because this is take 300 of this video. It'll be in the top right. I've done a video covering loot and how it works. So please check that out. Top right. Ding, ding, somewhere. I really hope I'm pointing the right direction. Um, you're done. We did it. That's loot. That's that's everything. You've fucking... Good job. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, you get stuck, you get, you get a crash or anything like that, please comment down below. I will do my best to help you. Uh, I've helped a ton of people with my Fallout 4 tutorial using Nexus Mod Manager. Um, if you have any issues with this tutorial or you need me to clarify something, that sort of thing, I do reply pretty quick. Um, I don't do anything else really. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm here to help. Uh, if you like this video, please like it, share it around, tell your friends. 